Well, good morning. I'm Jeff Roberts. Welcome to today's reflection from Christchurch. As I was thinking about this, I was gently but firmly led to the topic of prayer. I know I've spoken on this before, not least when I mentioned the amazing way Paul prayed. And I want to come again to Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1 and then to some amazing quotes from Billy Graham and Max Lucado. But first of all, Paul, for this reason, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Well, in, in seven verses, we have one sentence of 167 words. So it isn't the easiest read. Two of our grandchildren are at Christchurch and their English homework recently has been all about punctuation, including the different types of commas. This would be a great sentence to analyze. But it's a great sentence to analyze for a much more significant reason because it lays out the most amazing reminder of what we can pray for when we think of others. Paul is speaking to Christian believers, but it's a prayer that's valid for everyone, a prayer for them to have God's wisdom, their hearts enlightened, knowledge of the certainty of the hope before them, and a recognition of God's amazing power and majesty. In a way, that's a model prayer for us as we pray for our family and friends, for colleagues and neighbors. It's certainly a prayer I want prayed for me. But I also got to thinking about those times when Paul asked for prayer for himself. In Philippians 1 verse 19. Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. He's in prison. He has confidence, though, even in difficult times. And that confidence is based on the fact that people are praying for him, praying for the outcome that Jesus wants. Then in Romans 15, verse 30, I appeal to you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf, that I may be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea, and that my service in, for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints. He's saying that, and he knows that prayer together, working together, is good for the spread of the gospel. He recognizes that he is not on a one-person mission. And again, he's praying for help. He's praying for help to communicate God's good news. And he doesn't focus on his apostolic stature, but on the partnership he has with believers. Elsewhere, Ephesians 6, 19, he, he requests prayer for the right words in sharing the gospel. Prayer to proclaim the gospel without fear. For clarity and communication, Colossians 4. And for doors to be opened for the gospel, also in Colossians 4. He prays and requests prayer for the gospel to run through his ministry through every strand of his ministry. Then I wanted to pick up 2 Thessalonians 3. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. Paul is human. He asked for protection. Paul is driven. He asks for prayer that he might do what God has laid on his heart for him to do. 
that he might spread the good news of Jesus Christ. I just want to end with four quotations. The first is from Max Lucado. He wrote, our prayers may be awkward, our attempts may be feeble, but since the power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not in the one who says it, our prayers do make a difference. And then three quotes from Billy Graham. First one, true prayer is a way of life, not just for use in cases of emergency. Make it a habit, and when the need arises, you will be in practice. And one I thought was particularly beautiful. We are to pray in times of adversity, lest we become faithless and unbelieving. We are to pray in times of prosperity, lest we become boastful and proud. We are to pray in times of danger, lest we become fearful and doubting. We are to pray in times of security, lest we become self-sufficient. And then the final quote from Billy Graham was one that reveals the character of the man. The Christian life is not a constant high. I have my moments of deep discouragement. I have to go to God in prayer with tears in my eyes and say, oh God, forgive me or help me. Our pastor in Geneva wrote a book about prayer, which I've mentioned before. It was called Dialogue with God. The message being that we speak out to God and we listen in to him and that we do indeed make that our way of life. Let's pray now. Father God, we thank you that you know us and love us. We thank you that we can come to you in prayer with our fears and our hopes. We thank you that you understand us, that you don't score us on eloquence, but that you see a contrite and sincere heart. Lord, help us to pray for each other. Help us to pray for the growth of your kingdom through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The song I've chosen is called Our Prayer by Rend Collective. It's one I've only just found, but I just love the theme. Have a great day. God bless. <laughs>